Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy, Brave Alice Tears here. In today's session we're going to be looking at some applied anatomy to the fetal circulation so that when we get to look at the fetal circulation itself we have some basic understanding of some of those temporal structures that are created in fetal life and help in the facilitation of a smooth flow of oxygen and all the nutrients from maternal circulation to the fetus and then the return of all the waste materials back to maternal circulation and then the process then continues over and over again. Now let's get right into it and do a bit of naming of some of those uh, parts that we have on the diagram here today that is going to help us in understanding uh, parts of the fetal circulation. So we're going to basically start from where the blood emanates from, where the nutrients and all the oxygen is coming from, which is obviously the placenta. Now, if you look at this part here, so you're going to have the placenta on this far end, and the placenta then connects to the fetus with um, an umbilical cord. Now, in that umbilical cord, you have a three major vessels and the three major vessels that are there is the bigger one is the umbilical vein so we are going to have obviously the umbilical vein which is this one that carries the oxygenated blood from the placenta and then to the fetus and then you have two vessels that are bringing back blood to the placenta and those ones we are going to call them the umbilical arteries Okay, so those are the two uh, main uh, differentiated vessels, that is the vein and the two arteries that then help in the supply and the removal of uh, waste materials, the supply of oxygen and the removal of all waste materials. Now, as this umbilical vein comes through to the the rest of the circulation there's a part that then joins the portal circulation which is here and then there's another part that bypasses the liver and then joins the bottom part or the major vessel that collects all the deoxygenated uh, blood from the bottom of the heart. Now this structure here is going to be called the inferior vena cava and we'll label it as just IVC which is the inferior vena cava. Now before we get to the inferior vena cava we have the umbilical vein that is then coming to join the inferior vena cava and the area that the umbilical vein joins the inferior vena cava is a temporal structure that we call the ductus venosus. So this area here where the umbilical vein joins the IVC or the inferior vena cava is referred to as the ductus venosus. Now it's called ductus venosus because you have a vein joining another vein and so there's a shunt that is creating a shortcut for the blood to then join the rest of the circulation. Now we said that the ductus venosus allows for the bypass of the liver so this structure that we have here we are going to label it as the liver. Okay. So we have the liver here. As we go off, because we have the inferior vena cava, then it means up there we have the superior vena cava. So it means that this other part of the vessel, the bigger vein that collects all the deoxygenated blood from the upper part here is going to be called the superior vena cava. So it means that we have the superior and we have the inferior vena cava. Now you have blood that is coming from the heart and going to the lungs so you have lungs here on this other end you're going to have a lung here and on the same on the other side you also have a lung now the blood that is coming from the heart to the lungs will get to the lungs through the pulmonary artery and so this part here is going to be the pulmonary artery okay and when blood goes to the lungs it gets back to the heart through the pulmonary vein. So what you have down here is going to be the pulmonary veins. 
okay now i must also make mention that during fetal life the lungs are not functional so when we come to look at the fetal circulation then we'll understand what happens with these major veins and the role they play during uh, fetal circulation okay so when we get to this part here this part is going to be called the right atrium so you have the right atrium here and this part down here because this part is for ventricles is going to be called the right ventricle rv and then on the left part we will have the left ventricle and then again on the upper part because that is the atrium it will be called the left atrium okay so we have the arterial section um the atrial uh, section and then we have the ventricular section as well then you have a valve here this valve that allows the connection from the right atrium to the right ventricle is called the tricuspid valve and then the valve that allows the flow of blood from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery is known as the pulmonic valve and then the valve that allows the flow of blood from the um, left atrium into the left ventricle is known as the bicuspid valve and then from the left ventricle into the iota you have the aortic valve now before we get into the left section of this heart we are still in the right atrium now in the right atrium you have an opening here during fetal life that allows the flow of oxygenated blood from the right atrium to the left atrium which we are going to call the foramen ovale so you have a structure here this opening here is going to be called the foramen ovale. Okay, so we have already mentioned two structures that are temporal structures. One is the ductus venosus, and then you have the foramen ovale, which is the second uh, temporal structure as well that is created in addition, obviously, to the umbilical vein and the umbilical arteries. So this allows blood to flow in in that uh, direction. Now, when you look at this, you have this part here, and this part is the iota. Now, on the iota here, you obviously have the ascent descending iota then you have the arc of the iota and then you have the descending iota so this is going to be the descending iota okay and then this one is the arc of the iota so just right here where the iota begins to ascend you have two vessels that are emanating one to the left and one to the right and the one going to the left is called the left coronary artery and the one going to the right is called the right coronary artery now those coronary arteries because the heart also needs its own supply it needs oxygen for it to continue its function and for the uh, muscle layer as well to continue contracting and supplying the rest of the um, system so you have those two arteries as well emanating from them now we have another temporal structure that allows so this is the pulmonary artery meaning that from the right ventricle blood is then shunted to either go to the lungs or then get through to the iota now during fetal life you have a temporal structure here that is created which is going to be right at this junction that means it allows blood to move from the pulmonary artery joining the blood that is in the iota in normal circulation the blood that is channeled through the pulmonary artery should then get to the pulmonary um uh, artery and then get to the lungs for oxygenation but when we are looking at a fetal circulation there is a temporal opening or a shunt that is created which is a shortcut for the blood to move from the uh, pulmonary artery going into the iota and this part is what we are calling the ductus arteriosus why because it is a join or a connection between a pulmonary artery and an iota which is also an artery so that is going to be called the ductus arteriosus
Yeah. Okay, so we have another opening there that will give us the ductus arteriosus. Now, if you look at the arc of iota, the arc of the iota, it has uh, three vessels that seem to be emanating there. So if I drew those uh, three vessels here, and then they save also their own papers. So you have the three vessels that are actually coming out of the iota. The one on the right that seems to be a little bit separated from the rest is what is known as the brachiocephalic artery. Okay, so you have the brachiocephalic Okay, now from the brachiocephalic, you also notice that it is called brachiocephalic because it is supplying the cephalic, which is the head part, and then the brachio, which is basically the arm. So from the brachiocephalic, as it continues to go up, it reaches a stage where it gives rise to another artery here, and then this one continues going up. So the one that it gives rise to is known as the right subclavian artery, and then the one that then continues to supply the cephalic region is then going to be called the right common carotid artery. Now, the right common carotid artery will then again bifurcate and separate, meaning that it will give rise to the internal carotid artery and then the external carotid artery. Okay, so that is the brachio um, cephalic artery and then you have the two that are on the left portion so the one that is on the outer end here is going to be referred to as the left subclavian artery so you have the left subclavian artery Okay, and then what remains in the middle here is going to be called the left common carotid artery. So this one here is going to be called the left common carotid artery. So left common carotid artery. So those are the three vessels that emanate from the iota there and are responsible for supplying the upper limbs and also the uh, head on the other end. So that is about the iota and then you have obviously the uh, descending iota giving rise to a number of arteries there also supplying different uh, structures. Now we have already made mention of all those other structures but when we get to this uh, bottom end here you will notice that there is again the iota bifurcates giving rise to the left iliac artery and also the right iliac artery. Now as it gives rise to these so these are known as the iliac arteries okay so these are iliac arteries. Now, the iliac arteries would then separate into what is known as an internal iliac artery and an external iliac heart artery. So this is going to be external and then this one here is going to be internal. Now, the umbilical arteries are going to emanate from the internal iliac arteries and then they will bring all the blood back to the placenta and then the process again starts all over and then blood will continue to circulate in uh, that manner. So those are some of the, um, the structures that are involved in the fetal circulation. But of importance to note is that there are temporal structures that are created and we've talked about the umbilical vein obviously and the umbilical arteries and then we have the ductus venosus which is just an area that connects one vein into another vein and then we have the foramen ovale allowing some connection between the right atrium and the left um, um, atrium and then you also have the ductus arteriosus which is a connection between two major arteries that is the pulmonary artery and the arc of the iota or the iota and then blood then flows into the descending iota and then the process will start all over again as blood will reach the placenta through the umbilical arteries so that is that on applied anatomy to the fetal circulation so do look out for a video on how then blood gets to flow through the uh, uh, fetal circulation 
circulation or the prenatal circulation now if you found this particular video interesting and exciting and helpful in trying to understand some of the temporal structures that are then created during fetal life don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up share the video as much as possible and also don't forget to drop me comments in the comment section i would like to hear what you think and also please do you follow and do you subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is Brain Shakers Academy. And as always from me, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.